I'm Carolyn McKnight and I am here to discuss the Greenwood Regional Park concept and our plans or thoughts and ideas about a new zoo, a new state-of-the-art zoo. And what you see here on this diagram is where our zoo is currently located. It is on 147 acres. We are only using about 70 acres of that land for the zoo, but what you see here in the Greenwood Regional Park concept are different ideas that we've heard from the public from uh, putting a new entrance way in at, at, at two different locations we'll have uh, an opportunity to enter the, the new area. We would have picnicking, fishing, outdoor adventure spaces. We would also have amusement uh, park. We'll have paddling, water park. People have asked us for picnicking areas, outdoor adventure spaces, zip lines, and all of those th type of uh, amenities that people would use. People would get up on a Saturday morning or a Sunday afternoon and take their family and, and spend all, all of the family time outdoors. Uh, kids of all ages, adults, uh, we would have spaces to serve teens as well because we know that teens are often not served in some of our areas and they like the more adventure type amenities. And so these are some of the things that people told us. We surveyed within a three mile radius of the zoo and when we talked to the people they told us we would like to see these type of amenities at Greenwood Park. And we heard them when they said what they wanted to see. And it was a scientific survey. And so as we decided what makes sense, we thought, well, now if we're hearing from the public, the public told us they would love to see adventure spaces like a water park, uh, similar to the Liberty Little Lagoon water park. We have a park here in the middle of the parish. We are serving almost 900,000 people every summer at that location. And I can't tell you the number of times I've heard from people in the northern part of the parish, especially in the Baker Zachary area, saying it would be nice to have a swimming pool or some type of water feature in addition to spray pads. And so this would be an opportunity for us to serve the aquatic family needs in that particular part of town. So we're excited that we would be able to bring something similar to the northern part of the parish. And this is an exciting time. It's a time where we know that uh, it would make revenue. It would generate jobs for teenagers and young adults. And so when we talk about economic development, this is what we mean when we say we would be able to serve the northern part of the parish economic development needs. What you see on this chart is it's an example of an adventure playground uh, where you have ropes, you have climbing walls, you have various areas, uh, nature play, outdoor adventure, kids climbing, exercising, being physical, enjoying themselves, spending time together, playing games, moving in different unique spaces around the play area. This is probably one of the most exciting features that people have talked about having at Greenwood Park. And so this, this particular image just gives you examples of what could happen at Greenwood Park. And it's really one that people have rated pretty high on their list of things that they'd like to see happen. On this particular slide, you'll see in this image, these are uh, additional rope courses, uh, rock climbing walls, you'll see a zip line. You also see people uh, doing things that, as I talked about with teenagers. Teenagers typically are hard to serve, but this is one way we know that this is an exciting adventure space because we currently have something similar to, uh, for the teenagers at Perkins Road Park and they use the rock climbing wall. We've never had zip lining in our park system, and this would give us an opportunity to bring in adventure play, zip lines, and you don't have to go to Costa Rica or Alaska. You can stay right here in Baton Rouge and have a wonderful time, an exciting adventure right in your backyard. What is the advantage of having a, a facility in North Baton Rouge to attract teenagers into, into something like this? It's, a, it's exciting because we know that when teens have two things going, they're ex exercising, and they're getting adventure play, and they're in a safe place, and it's giving them what they need in order to stay out of trouble, out of harm's way, 
and make sure that what they're doing is not creating any type of problems for our community. It gives them an outlet and helps to make sure that they have a place to be an excitement in their lives. What you see in this spirit image are people kayaking, canoeing. Uh, you see people in, involved in outdoor uh, type of uh, recreation play that you would normally see inside a facility. Uh, we believe these type of amenities would be the ones that people would like to participate in. Here's an outdoor space for concerts uh, where uh, there could be a stage, a performance, uh, arts going here. We would also see uh, various places where you could actually perform and, and outside areas where you can get out and even in the evening time and enjoy yourself. What we want people to know is that this is a new regional park concept. It's the first ever being proposed for the Baton Rouge Parish. This is an opportunity for people to do what they enjoy doing. Currently, they're out canoeing in one space at Greenwood Park, and our plan is to have at least two or three spaces for kayak and canoeing and outdoor adventure spaces because currently we, we have a, a number of people overusing areas, and we'd like to spread people out, give people an opportunity to really get involved in different spaces because Currently, we're really packed inside one little small space at the park. So this will be an opportunity to serve as many people as often as they would like to get out on a year-round basis. So in looking at this particular image over here, we're talking about true adventure, amusement type of uh, opportunities. We're talking about a carousel here that people have asked us for, um, somewhat of a mini sort of uh, Ferris wheel, a tree house that people can get into and play, spend most of the day. Many of these uh, images you see are, are things that are happening in many parks around the country where people want to have more amusement and would like to be outdoors and have family adventure spaces. And so these are the things that we're talking about to have in a true regional Greenwood Park. Have other communities been successful with this type of park? Typically they have been, if they get the support of the community, it's something that we have to make sure people understand. We're not talking about doing the same thing that we've been doing. We're talking about new, outside of the box. As a matter of fact, we are destroying the box. It is time for us to really deliver on a higher level for this community and this is a way for us to do it. This is the big overall image of Greenwood Park. Greenwood Park is a 660 acre park and it is the largest park in our system and we target this area as an area that's probably most suitable to become a regional park. A regional park is a park that serves all around the region. We'll bring people from Mississippi, from uh, Lafayette, from different parts of the area to play soccer at the soccer complex. We've been asked about what would we do to take care of the sports and tourism needs of this community. We know these type of programs and fields will be able to bring in people from all parts of the region to play soccer or baseball or run track because we know that when people come into town they are going to spend time usually Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They'll stay at your hotels, they'll eat at your restaurants, they'll buy band-aids and socks from your grocery stores. They will be in your community and, and here at this soccer complex all weekend long. And we can do this several months throughout the year. And so we know that it will bring in people from out of the area. We've been told by our tourism group that we need more spaces for these type of venues. And this would be an opportunity for us to do it. Also in this site, you'll see a horseback riding trail here in this particular zone of the park. We know that people rode horses in the park before we redeveloped this community park called Greenwood. They rode horses and now we will have an opportunity to ride horses 
again in this park. We've been asked for a cross country running area for people to do cross country. In the space 11 on this map, this is where the existing zoo is, but this is where what I talked about when I talked about reimagining Greenwood Regional Park and all of the different amenities that people have told us they would like to see in the park. We would also move our first T program over possibly into the near the Greenwood, uh, Greenwood Park uh, Dumas Golf Course area where you see we have a large golf course in this part of the park and then on this part of the park we currently have Clark Golf Course. You don't need two golf courses in the same park and what we're planning to do is create a more efficient, a better uh, system so that people can actually play golf, have a driving range near where they play golf, have a space for our first tee golf program, also make sure that we take care of the needs of all of our community members from soccer to track to baseball to golf, you name it, we're talking about bringing it here to this park. So we, we have a 60, uh, 660 acre site. On this side is Highway 19, on the other three sides are neighborhoods. And what we're saying is no place to grow. We have to make sure that we serve the people who are on the three sides of this park as well as the people in the region. And so this, this will give us an opportunity to do, it, to do it. You see a number of white dotted lines around. These are running and walking and jogging tracks and trails for people to, to run and walk and bike. And we know that people want to do this. They've told us in surveys. And so we're excited about being able to bring those. In fact, we're creating some even as we speak today. We're working on some of the trails, miles of trails as we speak. So we're talking here also about possibly having an area for people to hook up RV camps. So we, we know we can serve that need. We're thinking about true economic development. We're talking about job creation. For example, as the water park, we're talking about hiring a number of teens. We hire probably more teens at our water park than anyone in the, in the whole parish. And so we know that this will be job creation. We're talking possibly a, an additional 30 plus jobs, full time, year round jobs that we would also create to serve the needs of this space. We're now talking about a new zoo, a new state-of-the-art zoo. We started this conversation about maybe two, three years ago when we conducted our first strategic plan and we knew that we needed to, to take a look at our zoo. And so we called in experts, the best in the country, actually maybe even the best in the world. They were featured recently in Time Magazine talking about what new zoos have and, and, and what they offer to the community. And so as a result of our conversations with the, the consultants, we were, never talked about the idea of a moving uh, or moving of the zoo. We talked about how can we have and deliver the best, highest quality zoo experience to the public. In our discussions with different people, we were asked do you think the zoo is in the right place? And initially I thought, that is odd. You don't normally move a zoo unless there is a major uh, problem or a, a major reason. But what we, dis what we discovered in, in looking, we realized that to take and, and put the zoo in a new location, a more sustainable location, we would be able to double our attendance, or possibly even more. We currently serve about 250,000 people a year. Our focus is to serve as many people around the country, it's a tourism location, as we can. And we know that people in other communities are doing amazing things to make sure that their zoo is updated, and it's high quality, and it's state of the art. And Baton Rouge deserves a great zoo. And so we started with that premise in mind. And so then we started to look and we thought many of the great communities with great zoos are in areas where they are connected to other similar attractions or they're off of major freeways where we, our zoo is in an area where it's out of sight, out of mind, on a back road, rural road in North 
Baton Rouge. And so we thought, well, we need, we need to make sure we pay attention to it because if we're going to spend one dime of the taxpayer's money, we're making sure that we're doing it the right way at the right time in the right way. And this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about a zoo that we have never seen in Baton Rouge that will rival any zoo in the country. We're talking about bringing spaces to our zoo and different amusements and, and different uh, exhibits, such as what you see in this particular image where a tiger is walking over your head. And in and, and this zoo, you'll see a tiger one day, you might see a leopard another day, you might see a jaguar another day. And so our goal is to have spaces where monkeys are climbing and walking through the trees. You'll see things like you would see in Costa Rica. We're talking about spaces for outdoor eating and restaurants and social spaces for uh, picnics and parties and receptions and all of the things that we currently are, are doing, we would be able to do on a much grander scale. Baton Rouge deserves a great zoo, and so th we are continuing on with that in mind. This is an example of an, a zoo in where I, I came from in Dallas. The, this is a multi, uh, I guess, animal, mixed animal exhibit where you have several different animals. And you'll notice giraffes and zebras and elephants and all of those types of animals in the exhibit. And at the top of the, of the photo, you see people feeding giraffes. As a matter of fact, feeding, giraffe feeding made that community a, almost a half million dollars in revenue just feeding lettuce leaves to the, to the giraffes. This is an image of a bird of prey show where people go in and they watch alligators and birds and different type of exotic birds fly and perform tricks and all of, all of the different things to amuse the public. Here you see another image of an overhead uh, exhibit with the gorilla in it and so we you, you would see all different types of d different animals above you walking up through various areas and this is another image of, of a tiger walking through or an, an overhead sort of natural looking exhibit so we know that this is a type of zoo that people are expecting that people are building our zoo is currently not the type of zoo that people are investing in. And when you ask the question, well, why does our zoo look the way it does? Our zoo is the way it is, is because if you only give the zoo three to five million dollars every 10 years, you cannot sustain a zoo at that level of funding. You cannot do what we need to do. And so it is important for us to change our entire way of thinking about how we serve the conservation and education needs of this community. And we believe this new concept will do just that. How far do you anticipate people would drive to a new zoo like this? I would anticipate this would be an area where people could come from Florida, from Texas, from Arkansas, from Tennessee, all around the region, not just from within the state of Louisiana. We believe that it will be a rival zoo to any of the major zoos in the country. How important is access off of an interstate to a zoo? It's critical because when you think about it, when you go to Florida and you go to Animal Kingdom, it's right off of I-4. That is a major freeway. When you go to many communities, in, in where I came from, the area in Dallas, it's off of I-35. I-35 is just, and it's right near the downtown area, and it is a major, major freeway. Initially, they had talked about moving that zoo, but what they realized, they needed to move things that were around the zoo that were keeping people from coming to it, but they realized the zoo was in the right place, and so they, in fact, began a process probably 20, 25 years ago talking about what could we do to have the best possible zoo. And every year there were comments about the Fort Worth Zoo. It's off of a, a major area over in, in Fort Worth near the I-30 zone. So interstate access is absolutely critical for a zoo to be in the forefront, visible, accessible, making sure that people will actually pass by it often because the more you drive by a place, the more often you'll think, oh, I need to stop, I need to take the kids. Oh, maybe we need to stop and go over and have some fun this, this weekend. And so if it's on Thomas Road, and the only people passing by on Thomas Road are the people who live in Baker and Zachary, 
that's usually not the best location. It's about location, location, location. It is not about hurting a community. The way we're showing our concern and to make sure that we serve the quality of life needs for the community is that we are bringing um, an amazing amenity to Greenwood Park if the zoo moves. What you see in this image, you see several different things. In, in the top left side, you'll see a, a restaurant, a naturally built restaurant. People are sitting here eating. And then you see people on a boat ride. And this would give people in Louisiana a swamp tour experience. People typically come into town for maybe a, a conference and they may stay at the hotel, they may go to the various meetings, but they don't get out and experience the whole area. And this will give an opportunity to, to introduce the swamp, introduce the Atchafala Basin experience to the people. This is an image of a water, a spray pad built by Papa John's Pizza. And so when, you, when I say Papa John's Pizzas, I'm talking about businesses who would build exhibits and build different restaurants for us to make sure that they can actually serve the public and we can offset some of the costs associated with building a new zoo. This is a spray pad and they realized it's near a uh, polar bear exhibit and they realized recently that it was too small and now they have totally restructured it and, they, and it's four times the size that it was. These are very popular places in zoos today that you currently don't see. And as far as our zoo is concerned, one of the points that I think is really important to make, we have an opportunity to give this community a zoo in five years at a new site, in a more sustainable site, but it would take us 15 years to construct a new zoo of this type at our existing space because we have a situation where we have to complete one exhibit and then a, a year or two or three later, we have to move the animals and complete another exhibit. A year two or three later, we have to complete another part of the, the zoo. And so we're talking about taking 15 years to do what we could actually do in five years. We're talking about the same cost at the, at the zoo where we're currently located or at a new place. So when you think about the cost to build a zoo, you want to maximize your investment and you want to make sure that you're making the wisest decision you can. And so this is why it's important for us to stop, be careful and be very deliberate and intentional about what we're doing because it's important for us not to waste taxpayers' money. It is my basic belief that the money we get from the taxpayer must be handled properly. We must be good stewards of the, of the taxpayer's money. And so when you hear me talking about bringing in as many public-private partnerships, any possible grant opportunities, any possible philanthropic opportunities, we intend to try to do everything we can do before we knock on the taxpayer's door asking for help. And these are the types of amenities that you can have in a system like a new zoo working with public-private partnerships and developers and various businesses. And so we will, we will focus on, on those areas. In this particular image, you'll see a glamping, outdoor camping adventures where people are staying in, in lodging facilities. At the, this is in Napa Valley. They stay overnight. They wake up in the morning, they sit out on the balcony, they watch the giraffes and the elephants pass by as they're having their cup of coffee. And people, these are so popular, and they, and they rent out for amazing amounts of money. And so we are thinking that this is another revenue opportunity, plus to give people when they're in town to visit for an LSU football game or a Southern football game, they, they can come and, and participate in, in, our, in the things that we're doing at our zoo. Again, you see the mixed animal uh, exhibits and these are things that we're seeing across the country. People are finding more and more creative ways to be able to deliver new, amazing, exciting adventure spaces in zoos. So this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about the same thing we've been doing here. We're talking about something so totally amazing, so totally different, that this community would just be at a whole nother level. And so this is what we're saying, and we hope that people will understand the message should be clear by at this point. We're not doing the same thing and expecting different results. We're being smart, 
we're being visionary, we're being focused, and our goal is to make sure that we provide the best possible options for the conservation, education, as well as quality of life needs, and also impact the economic development outcomes of this community. What success have other com communities had when they've tried something like this to build a new zoo to add all these features? I will use the Indianapolis uh, Zoo as an example. They talked about building a new zoo many years ago. They realized that they needed to move. And it was a bit of similar to our situation, what we have today. It was in an area that was sort of off, out of the way, in the, in the background. And they knew that they needed to bring the zoo and closer to the, to the other attractions. And so they moved the zoo. And today their zoo is thriving. I mean, they tripled the attendance, they tripled revenue. Uh, people are coming from various parts of the, of the region to go to the zoo. It's an amazing zoo. And, and we know that we could do the same thing here in Baton Rouge if we are able to be visionary, be strong, true leaders, uh, make sure it's a good community business-based decision and not caught into some unbelievable, unreasonable political situation that we don't really need to, to have. Because when we do that, we slow this community down. When we do that, we don't serve this community. And the reason I am here in this community is to make sure that I give the best I can. What are the steps moving forward? Where do we stand now and what are the next steps? Where we stand today is eventually we know in order to be able to move forward to the next step. We talked about this being a book uh, with the maybe 13 or 15 chapters. We're now entering into chapter number three because we have to get our commissioners to go ahead and take a look at what we're talking about and then give us permission to pursue the most sustainable location for our zoo as well as to pursue uh, creating a real true regional park for Greenwood. And when they give us, hopefully very soon, give us the approval to move forward, our plan is to then start to talk about how do we fund it, what business opportunities are available, what partnership opportunities are out there, what philanthropic opportunities are out there. We know that it's going to take a great deal of heavy lifting and we're ready for the, the work that we need to do. We know that there is excitement out there. We've heard people say, well, we don't want you to move the zoo. Well, when you talk about a business and we know that we want to have the zoo sustain more of its cost, instead of only subsidizing it you know, to the tune of 50%, we're talking about the community would then subsidize it to the tune of maybe 25% if it's able to do many of these things that we're talking about here. We're talking about a less of a tax burden on the people. We know that it will take some time. We know that we have to go and we will have to con conduct a scientific survey to poll the people to see what the people would be willing to pay in terms of the funding needs. We are currently conducting a, an online, somewhat, it's not scientific, but it's an online opinion poll to basically ask the people, what is it that you would like to see in a new regional Greenwood Park? We're not asking the people whether or not we should move or not move the zoo. We know the recommendation will be from the staff to move the zoo. Our focus today is to find out what adventures do you want to see in the new Greenwood Regional? And so these are just some of the steps that we know we have to take. We probably have about maybe 12 different more things that we have to do before we actually get to the point of breaking the ground and moving forward on both. What I need to make sure you, the people understand is our focus is to make sure that we do both. We're not playing games with people. We're not lying to people. Our focus is to make sure that while we are designing, we design both sites at the same time, the new zoo and the reimagined Greenwood. We would then start the construction at the zoo, the new zoo, and we could begin construction on some of the places at the Greenwood Park where they don't have animals located, such as the ball fields. The, the horseback riding areas, various places that the zoo animals are not located in. Once we're able to move our animals 
safely to their new home and we believe in making sure that we take good care of our animals. We will put them in the space where they need to be and then we will start the adventure uh, playgrounds and the water park and all of the different things that we're talking about at Greenwood Park. What advantages it would be for the animals to be in a new location? We believe that the animals are in a great space today. We are taking great care of our animals. But we know that in a space where people, it's more of a, uh, an area for people to really have more engaging experiences with animals, such as giraffe feeding. When you're feeding an, an, a lettuce leaf to a giraffe, you take the leaf, you put it in the giraffe's mouth. His face is about this close to your face. We're talking about being able to give animals water, uh, do different things where we are able to feed them and, and to help to uh, work with the keeper staff to learn more about the, the animals up close and personal but safe. We believe that any space we provide, a new space for an animal, we take great care to make sure that all of those areas are in fact conducive and proper and, and, and structurally sound. As I said, we have the best in the business telling us how to get this done. And, and it's great that we had students from LSU sharing their thoughts. But when you think about the reality of constructing a facility for a dangerous, exotic animal, it's a lot different from building a conference room or a recreation center. And so we will listen to the people, the experts. We will do it right. In conclusion, what would you like people to keep in mind as this process goes forward? Please keep an open mind more than anything. Think about location, 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 because sustainability is the absolute top of the, the, the whole idea. We know that we have to make sure that we depend less on the taxpayer and more on earned income revenues. We know we can do it. Other people are doing it. We want Baton Rouge to be the best Baton Rouge it can be, and we want to be a part of it. And I hope people will keep an open mind, stay tuned, take a look at what we're doing online at our website at www.breck.org, and check out what we are talking about before you make a decision. Superintendent, if people have questions like more information, what should they do? They should go to the zoo website or the Breck's website, and the, the www.breck.org will tell you about what we're doing, and then you will be able to link to the zoo site. We will have information in the newspaper, we'll have information on radio programs, but we want to direct people to our URL and, and, and that will get you to what we're doing at the regional Greenwood as well as the, the new reimagined zoo for Baton Rouge.